In this video, we're gonna learn how to remove the reds of the face or the red pigments of the skin in Photoshop. Now here's the thing, a lot of people might talk you into using those curves and channels and all those complicated stuff to do the exact same thing in a complicated manner. Now consider this, you would agree that not two human beings are identical and science says that. Also, the lighting situations are always different. Now, how do you expect two skin tones to have the exact kind of red pigment? Now that cannot happen, right? Now one red channel cannot determine the red pigments of every skin tones all around the globe. That cannot, that just cannot happen. Now here's the key. In this video, I'm gonna show you a totally non-destructive way to first analyze the red pigments and then remove it in Photoshop. So without any further ado, let's get started. <laughs> So here we are in Photoshop and since when Photoshop started looking like this, by the way this is Explorer, just kidding. Alright, so I haven't yet imported the image, I just wanted to show you a special thing, okay? So this is a raw photo that we are retouching today and to import it, we would import it directly into Photoshop. But here's the special thing, while you import a raw photo, you get the Photoshop camera raw opened up. Now. Instead of adjusting and opening the image, what you have to do, adjust if you want to, okay? Uh, I'm not gonna adjust it now, okay? I'll tell you why. So suppose you have adjusted it this way. Now press and hold shift and click on this button. Now when the shift was not held, this button was open image. But when, it, when the shift is held, it changes to open object. Now watch, if I click on this, watch what happens. Now this open up as a smart object. Now whenever you want to go back to camera raw with the same similar settings, all you have to do, you just have to double click on this and the camera raw will open up with the same settings. I talked about this in my previous video. Now here's the advantage of this. The advantage of this is that even after you have added a lot of adjustment layers, you can always go back to this and do the required adjustments or the modifications that you want to do. So you get the power of Lightroom and the versatility of Photoshop. All right, so the first thing that you need to do is to create an adjustment layer. What adjustment layer? Hue saturation, okay? Now, create a hue saturation adjustment layer. Now let's close it. It's pretty huge and we don't need it right now. So let's go ahead and let's just analyze the red pigment. Now, these are the red pigments, as you can see, these are the red pigments, these are the red pigments. Now, we don't want to select any of this. We just want to select the reds. So, how do we do that? Okay, open up hue saturations. You didn't have to close it. I just wanted to show you the red pigments. All right, let's make it a little smaller and click on this tool. Okay, just click on this tool and click on the red pigment. Now here's the thing, if you click on this red pigment, it might be different from this one, it might be different from this one, and by accident you might click into an area which is kind of blue, maybe due to the noise of the camera. So here's what you can do. This is not that important, but to be extra sure and extra careful, here's what you can do. You can go back to this layer and you can select the red area, select the lasso tool and select the red area. Okay, be careful, just select the reds, oops, control D. Just select the reds, for example, this red area, and control a command J. Now we have this on a separate layer. Now let's make an average of it. To make an average of it, press and hold control a command and click on this. This selects this object, then go to filter, blur, and then average. Now we have the exact color of the red pigment. See, it's not perfectly red. It might be different for every skin. Depends upon skin to skin. All right, now let's go to hue saturation, double click on this, and now let's click on this object, click on this tool icon, and now click. You get the perfect sample, okay? Now we don't need this layer, let's go ahead and delete it, or turn it off, whatever you want to do, you do. Now we have picked up the reds. Still the selection is incomplete, why? Because we haven't determined the range, okay? The range of reds that we are going to select. Now, just for an indication, Move the hue slider all the way to the left to see which areas are being affected. Now, as you can see, the whole of the skin is being affected and we didn't want that to happen, right? We just want the, the reds of the skin to be affected. So, see these two bars here? What are these two bars? These are the color spectrum of the image. Now, the bar which is above is the original color spectrum that we are targeting. 
The bar which is below is the result of the effects or the changes we make. Now for example, we have selected the reds and we have moved the hue all the way to the left. So watch here, this area in the color spectrum is changed. So this is the target, this is the result. Got the idea? Awesome. Now as you can see, too much of a range is selected. So we would drag it, we would narrow it down from both sides, okay? Just narrow it down, make it very thin from both sides, like very small, like this small. Now, this might be a little difficult, but hold in the middle, not on the bars, not on the sidebars, just hold in the middle and move. Just, just let's move it to the side and let's shift this and stop at a point where most of the reds is selected. Now, this is too much, this is too less, okay? Stop at the point where most of the reds is selected. So, I might stop somewhere here, okay? So here, I think it's the perfect uh, selection of the range. Now, as you can see, the selection is very harsh and we need to make it soft and also increase the range. First, increase the range. So take the right bar, not the outside one, take the right bar, the small one, and take it to the right till you select most of the reds. Now this is selecting the skin tones also. Now you don't want that. So let's reduce it. You just want to select the reds, okay? So this is fine. Now let's try the left bar, okay? Just the reds and nothing else. Now we need to make the selection smooth. To make the selection smooth, we have to use these two sliders. Now what are these two sliders? Remember the fuzziness slider in select color range or the sliders under the blend if option in blending modes where we used to press alter option and click on that slider and it used to break up and we used to separate that to make the transition smooth. Now what those slider did was that they made the transition between the area that is selected and the area that is not selected smooth, right? And these sliders also do the same. They make the transition between area that we have targeted and the area that we have not targeted smooth, okay? So let's increase it just a little bit to make it a little smooth. This one just a little bit. So most of the reds have been selected. Now we can even narrow down the bar if you want to. So there you go. Now we have selected most of the reds, okay? As you can see, we have selected the reds. Now, let's return the hue all the way to the original position, okay? I really want to just adjust it just a little bit, just not to affect the skin. Maybe it might take some time. Let's do it really properly. Okay, let's do it again. Let's do it properly this time. So these are the reds that we have selected. These are the reds. Okay, now let's make it soft. Make it soft from this side. There you go. Now return the hue to the original position. Now let's go ahead and zoom out and bingo. We have selected the red areas and you can now modify it the way you want. You can desaturate it, you can increase the hue. All right, so let's remove the reds. There you go, it's gone. Watch, now let's just desaturate it just a little bit. So let's look at the before and after. So this is the before, this is the after. Let's zoom out. Let's go ahead, let's look at the before and after. So this is the before, this is the after. The red thing's gone. And guess what, if you're not satisfied with it, you can always go to the properties and you can select the reds. That selection that you had made is still there and you can even move the selection, narrow it down or increase the range. Do whatever you want and there you go. You just have decreased it. You can always change it the way you want to. Okay, maybe, there you go. So. This is the before, this is the after. And anytime you wanna go back, anytime you wanna go back, double click on this and you're back in Camera Raw. Okay, cancel that. Looking at the before and after, I just noticed and it reminded me that if your image has some other red object, which is not the skin, what to do then? For example, have a look at this. This is just his body, right? There's nothing else red. But if you just look at the before and after, so this is the before, and this is the after. A little bit of reds from the lips is going away. And we don't want that. So how to get it back? Simple as you might have guessed, select this layer mask of hue saturation. If it's white, paint in black, okay? So wherever you paint in black, the effect will not show up. Wherever you paint in white, the effect will show up. Since this is completely white, the effect shows up all through the photo, okay? Now if you paint in black, Make sure you select the brush, foreground color is black, 
and let's just paint in black in this area there you go now you have the red back in that particular area besides if he was wearing something red or somewhere along the similar color you could have painted that black also now here's one more thing also what you can do too many also's also what you can do let's go back and you could have inverted the mask by pressing controller command i okay and then paint over only the red areas take the brush make sure the foreground color is white this time because you want the effect to be visible in the white areas and just paint over the red areas okay that's one of the things you can do if you have less of a skin more of clothes depends upon your workflow wasn't that interesting just a quick recap first thing what we did create a new adjustment layer what adjustment layer hue saturation adjustment layer right and then what we did did we change the colors no we pick the colors we analyze the color and to make a better analysis what did we do we made a selection of the reds and what we did we averaged it no we directly averaged it no we took the selection to a new layer then selected it again and then averaged it and then what do we did then we selected that analyzed that color and then manipulated it in hue saturation adjustment layer all right so that's what we did hope you enjoyed this and by the way Thank you so much to Troy Davidson for this amazing image. To check more of his work, go ahead and check it out right here. He's an awesome portrait photographer, so make sure you check out his work. If you enjoyed this video, you have to give it a like. And if you're not logged in, please log in and give it a like, please. <laughs> just kidding. By the way, make sure to hit the subscribe button and not just subscribe, click on that bell button so that you don't miss anything. I'll see you guys in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating. I'm flying high. Falling for nobody else but you You caught my eye And I've got a feeling I'm falling Show me the ring and I'll jump right through I used to